Welcome to this presentation entitled Conjugate Heat Transfer with ANSYS Fluent, where conjugate heat transfer on a tube thin heat exchanger will be illustrated. In this presentation you will find out how to set up and solve a conjugate heat transfer problem in Fluent. Conjugate heat transfer is a term used to describe the heat transfer through both fluid and solid media. This includes conduction, convection, and or radiation heat transfer modes. The purpose of this exercise is to build a simple tube thin heat exchanger model to demonstrate ANSYS Fluent's conjugate heat transfer capabilities. The working fluids are air and water, and in the heat exchanger the tube is made of copper and the fin is made of aluminum. Here's the tube fin heat exchanger problem schematic. So water at 60 degrees C at a velocity of 25 meters per second flows vertically down through a copper tube with an OD of 0.55 inches and an ID of 0.5 inches. Perpendicular to the tube mounted halfway up the tube is an aluminum fin uh, which is 4 inches by 4 inches in length and width and 0.02 inches thick. Over that fin and around the tube flows air at 20 degrees C at a velocity of 1 meter per second. As the hot water moves through the tube it is cooled by the cold air as it moves over the fin and around the tube. The heat exchanger geometry was generated in ANSYS design modeler using primitives. Here you see two cylinders highlighted in green centered about the origin. Both of them are 1 inch high one has a radius of 0.25 inches and the other one has a radius of 0.275 inches. These will be used to generate the liquid volume and the tube volume. Next we have a box primitive which is 4 inches long by 4 inches wide by 0.02 inches tall and it is located halfway up the cylinders and this will be used to generate the fin volume. Next four boolean operations are performed in order to divide the volumes from each other. After that, there's two extrusion steps where the upper and lower surfaces of the fin are extruded up and down in order to generate an airspace volume. And then a larger airspace volume is generated around the current assembly. And then finally, the entire assembly is sliced by the XZ plane, as you can see here, in order to cut the mesh size in half. The model was then meshed in ANSYS Mesher. If we zoom in a little bit, you can see that the mesh is exclusively hexahedral. This is good as hexahedrals are the most accurate type of element that you can use in Fluent. We added uh, body sizing and edge sizing to different locations in the mesh in order to have mesh control in specific areas of interest. In particular, we wanted to make sure that the solids were more than one element thick in order to capture the temperature gradients in the solid. So as you can see here, the tube is three elements thick and the fin is three elements thick. Finally, we added the name selections so that the boundary conditions can be applied in fluent to those surfaces or volumes. Here is inlet air. Here on the other side is outlet air. And then here is inlet water on top and outlet water on the bottom. And then we have a number of symmetry boundary conditions here, top and bottom. And then um, here's one there and a number of other boundary conditions. And then finally, the name selections were also applied to different volumes so that the right material properties can be applied in fluent. Here is fluid air, and here is fluid water inside the tube, and here is solid fin. Let me zoom in a little. And there is solid tube. Now we set up the problem in fluent. We're going to be using the standard pressure base solver solved in steady state. We're going to be turning on the energy equation since we're looking at heat transfer. Our turbulence model is going to be the realizable K epsilon model. For the materials, we're going to need liquid water, air, copper, and aluminum, and these were all defined from the Fluent database. So you can see here are all the parameters as an example for uh, liquid water. Now for defining the cell zone conditions, we have fluid air, fluid water, solid fin, and solid tube. These are the name selections that we defined in measure. So for fluid air, we just have to make sure that the material name is air. For fluid water, the material name is water liquid, which it is. For the fin, we're using aluminum. There's where it's defined. And for the tube, we are using copper. Okay, now for the boundary conditions. The air inlet is a velocity inlet boundary condition type. The velocity is one meter per second. And the turbulence specification method is intensity and length scale. So our turbulence intensity is 3% and our length scale is 0.0127, which is the tube diameter. And the thermal boundary condition is an inlet temperature of 20 degrees C. Now for the water inlet, it is also a velocity inlet. The velocity magnitude is 0.25 meters per second. We're going to be using intensity and hydraulic diameter as a turbulence specification method. 3% turbulence intensity and a hydraulic diameter of 0.0127, which is the ID of the tube. And the thermal boundary condition is an inlet temperature of 60 C. Now for solution methods, I'm going to leave all the defaults in place. 
for solution control. So I'm going to change the under relaxation factors of pressure to 0.5 and momentum to 0.3. For monitors, I'm going to uncheck here all the check convergences so that we can run into deep convergence if we want. And then I'm going to set up a surface monitor that is going to plot the mass weighted average temperature at the water outlet so we can see how that changes during the solution. We can make sure that way that when we stop the solution that the value has reached steady state and we have a good converged solution. So now we're going to initialize the solution using a hybrid initialization. And that is done. And we're going to uh, calculate for 300 iterations. Here we have run for 300 iterations and you can see that all of the residuals are below the default convergence criteria of 1e e to the minus 3 some by many orders of magnitude and if we look here at the uh, monitor that we defined it's the mass average temperature at the water outlet you can see that it has reached steady state for most of the 300 iterations so you can consider this case to be well now let's do some post processing in fluent post what you see here are contours of temperature on the y mid plane the tube and fin surfaces as well as the water inlet surface so what is physically going on is that the water is transferring heat to the tube through the process of convection. Then the tube is uh, transferring heat to the fin also through conduction. And then the cold air as it moves from left to right is picking up that heat through the process of convection. So as you can see here, the uh, temperature of the air has gone up as it goes around the tube and over the fin. Now let's look at some delta temperature calculations. For the air, the mass average change in temperature is about 1.1 degrees C. And for the water, the mass average change in temperature is 0.1 degrees C. Clearly one fin is not very effective at cooling the water in the tube. Many fins would be required to achieve a significant temperature drop in the water, which is the point of the heat exchanger. However, the ANSYS Fluent Academic Meshing Limit of 512,000 cells would not permit more than a single fin to be modeled with sufficient resolution. Therefore, these results were meant purely as a demonstration. This concludes our presentation. Thank you very much.